Hi, I'm Laura. I'm with Andrea and our dog, Nisha. Today, we are in Flagstaff, Arizona, on the north side of the San Francisco mountains. We are going to be hiking up the Avenue Trail today, and at the top, we'll be filming our yin yoga video for hikers. Thought this would be a perfect place. So if you do want to do this trail, um, you can do the loop. So you can go up this trail, go across the waterline trail, and then down the bear jaw trail. Now uh, this is the more strenuous side, so if you like something a little more gradual, you can uh, go up the bear jaw and then down the avenue trail. One of the best things about this trail is that there is no, not too many people on it. So that's uh, good if you don't like too many crowds on your hike. It's kind of tucked away and not as many people know about it, so that works great for us. As you can see, uh, it's just beautiful and it's, it gets even more gorgeous toward the top. It's a beautiful, perfect day for this, so we're, we were blessed to have this uh, wonderful day. We were a little bit concerned about thunderstorms, but we made it through without it today. So there's Andrea. And uh, as you can see, uh, you'll see up ahead a little bit, uh, there's a big spot where an avalanche took out a whole big section of trees uh, a number of years ago. So this probably would not be the best hike for winter time. There it is. So that's uh, just kind of neat to see that. So as we prepare for our yin yoga class, if you can go ahead and grab some blankets, a couple of blankets, a couple of uh, towels, bolsters, cushions, uh, if you have blocks, large books, you can use a variety of things at home for props. I do encourage the use of props because they will help you get into the yin postures uh, better and safer. And uh, in yin, we focus on the connective tissue the ligaments, tendons, uh, fascia, joints. So in order to do that, we need to allow our muscles to relax. So if you prop yourself correctly, it allows the muscles to relax, and then we get into the connective tissue. So we will be holding these poses anywhere from two to five minutes. So we're gonna do that, because that's the amount of time that you really need to get into those connective tissues. And in addition to the uh, joints and the fascia, it's also a wonderful practice for the mind. Because we'll be in these poses for a while, so I will speak for a little bit, but then I'll, I'll let you um, kind of marinate in the pose and uh, you know do some mental calming and meditation. However, uh, that works for you. This is a, a great, practice to kind of balance out your active lifestyle, like the hiking, the more active yoga. Day-to-day um, -day life, busy, we're always busy, so yin is a wonderful practice to balance that out. And uh, it, you will notice a, a greater range of motion after you've been, you've been practicing a while. And here we are, this is where we're going to be filming our class today. This is at 10,500 feet. So you could see Humphreys Peak, tallest peak in Arizona in the background. And let's settle in. So let's just take a moment, listen to your breath, close your eyes. Take a big inhale and open your mouth and exhale. Ah. Let's do it again. Inhale. Ah, one more time, big inhale. And return to your normal breath. Blink your eyes open. The first pose we're gonna come into is a foot stretch and child's pose. So take your left foot flat or pointed and then take your right foot, the bony part of your right foot, and kind of drape it over the arch of your left foot. And then go ahead and bring yourself back into a child's pose. So your knees will be about hip width apart with your feet like this, 
So it's a little different than maybe the wide-legged or knees close together child's pose. But this is a wonderful stretch for hikers because we you know, tend to have tight feet. The bottom of your feet is not something we normally stretch out. So this is a wonderful stretch for that. And then of course, child's pose is a grounding pose. This helps us bring ourselves into the moment, into our body, gives us a gentle low back stretch and a slight hip stretch here. So this, we're going to hold this for about two minutes on this side, and then we will go ahead and switch over to the other. So just go ahead and try to relax those muscles as much as possible. Breathe and feel your body. Okay, come back up to all fours. Let's tap out our feet a little bit, and then we will flip to the other side. So the right foot will be straight, and your left foot will drape across your right arch, getting that bony part in there so you really get a, a good stretch. And keep in mind that we are not symmetrical, so one foot, you might feel it much more intensely than the other foot. That is perfectly normal. Ease back into this and just relax. Okay, slowly come back up to all fours, tap those feet out. We never want to rush in yin. Just take your time, be easy with your body. The next pose we're going to come into is a wide-legged forward fold called dragonfly. Now I would strongly encourage you to sit on the edge of one or two blankets or towels this helps raise your hips and helps you tilt your pelvis forward. 
We don't want to strain in any of these poses. And if you have very tight hamstrings, you may want to put blocks under your knees or rolled blankets. If you're comfortable, go ahead and lean forward in this pose and round your back. If you have any sciatic problems, you can stay upright or uh, maybe try to keep your back straighter if you keep it straight and then lean forward just less and prop yourself up. Um, you might try that as well. But if you're feeling okay, go ahead and drape yourself down. This is a good one to prop yourself, your forehead like on some blocks or uh, you can put your upper body on a bolster or two bolsters, whatever you need. Because if your body, your upper body is feeling supported, it will help your muscles relax. So just take a scan of your body, make sure your muscles are not engaged. This is a wonderful hamstring, hip, and low back stretch. I know our hamstrings uh, get pretty tight when we hike, so this is an excellent pose for that. So just take your time and breathe.
slowly push yourself up using your hands bend your knees maybe take a windshield wiper keep your feet wide and move your knees from side to side there's no rush maybe jiggle your legs out listen to your body do what it feels good next pose we're going to come into is called square so if you're on that blanket or towel sitting on them go ahead and stay there if you have open hips and you can stack your legs on top of each other like that without the big gap that i have feel free but if you have tighter hips like i do go ahead and bring your left leg in front of your right keeping them more parallel with the front of the mat so you're more like a square and then go ahead and bring yourself forward just as we did in the last pose um, it's also great to prop up your forehead on blocks have the bolster we want to feel this one in the hips and the low back just go ahead and breathe just relax those muscles Slowly make your way up to seated. Stretch those legs out. Let's do some windshield wipers. Maybe a reverse tabletop. There's nowhere else to be. Take your time. And when you're ready, let's come to the other side.
This side may feel different than the other. One might be more intense. This is a pretty intense hip stretch. So if you do try to keep it propped somewhat similar, but sometimes you may need a little more on one side than the other. Just be patient with your body. And try to meditate. You can use a mantra, repeat a mantra, word or phrase in your mind. You might focus on your breath. You can count your breath. If you don't want to focus, you can always just kind of let your mind wander. But if you do that, just try not to react to anything that may pop up in your mind. It's a good time to just observe your thoughts and let them go.
Slowly push yourself up. Straighten your legs. Do your windshield wipers or whatever movement feels good to you. First tabletop always feels good. The next pose we're going to come into is called saddle. Now if your knees, if you have knee problems, you should probably avoid this pose. But um, you, if you can, please try it because it's a wonderful pose. Um, if this bothers your knees to sit in between your calves, you want to sit your butt on the ground. If that bothers you, you can sit on a block and raise your hips. Now, if that feels okay, you can start to lean back. Now, if you, uh, if it's a little hard for you, you can always put a bolster or cushion under your shoulders and head. That'll keep you upright a little bit more. Or um, you can always uh, prop yourself up on your forearms. But if you can, um, go ahead and lean all the way back as this is a wonderful stretch for the quadriceps, the shins, the ankles, and it's a, uh, a pretty good back bend for the lumbar spine. Now, this is the type of pose that you don't feel the back bend that much when you're in it, but when you start to come out, you, you'll really know that you were in a good back bend. So this is wonderful for the quadriceps. You know, when you hike, your quads get a little tight, your shins might get tight, and of course the ankles. So just uh, hang out here. Try to relax all those muscles. This is one that you might be tensing up on uh, and not realize it. So kind of scan your body and breathe. Now one thing in yin yoga that's different from the other types of yoga that are more active is the, um, the alignment, how it looks is not as important as how it feels. So in a yang class, you know, the teacher's telling you, you know, your knee shouldn't go over your ankle. You know, all these are important so you don't get injured during a class when you're moving fairly quickly. In yin, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Use your props, get into any pose the way you feel it because you want to feel it in your ankles and your quads and your lower back in this pose. So however you need to adjust yourself so that you feel it there, that works perfectly. So go ahead and relax into this pose for a few more minutes.
slowly and very carefully push yourself up out of this pose. This is one that you really feel when you come out of it. So take your time. Your low back will be very tender. Maybe do some cat cows or a child's pose. Just move your body slowly and gently. If you feel like you're 100 years old coming out of these poses, you are doing it right. So cat cows. Do whatever feels good to you. We're going to be coming into an ankle stretch now, so go ahead and just place your feet flat on the full, on the ground there, the, the top of your feet, and then we're gonna sit on them and then kind of lean back so you feel a gentle stretch in the ankles. Now this should feel really good to you, especially if you're hiking a lot. I know my shins tend to get a little tender after a while. We're only gonna be in this one for a couple of minutes. I know this is a more active pose because you're kind of pushing back with your arms. So you are engaging your muscles a little bit. That's okay. Just breathe into it. Okay, let's come back out, down to onto our knees. Tap your feet out a little bit. Move your body. Ah, that should feel good. The next pose we're gonna come into is called Melting Heart. So this is a wonderful shoulder stretch and upper back stretch. So if you try to get your, your hips over your ankles and then just stretch your arms way out in front of you. You can place your forehead, your chin, maybe even your chest on the ground. Uh, this is also one that you can use a block and rest your forehead on the block if that feels better to you. So try to melt into the ground. This is great for counterbalancing out, you know, carrying a heavy backpack for a long period of time. So this is great uh, shoulder and upper back stretch. We're gonna be here in this one for a shorter amount of time as well. Uh, this one's three minutes. So go ahead and enjoy the feeling.
Start making your way back up to tabletop. Taking your time. This can be a little intense on your shoulders. Let's sit back on our heels for a moment. Give ourselves a little bit of a stretch. Put your hands behind your back. Lift up, stretch those shoulders out. You may want to turn your neck around, stretch your neck. We're going to come on to our backs and do a slight twist and outer hip opener. So let's keep our feet as wide as the mat and just drop your legs, your knees, excuse me, over to the left side. Now this can be a good stretch as well, but if you'd like to take it a little further, you can put your left foot on the right knee. And that will make it uh, quite a bit more intense. So if that's too much, go ahead and back off and put that foot back on the ground. This is wonderful for the hip flexor and the outer hip. So we'll be feeling it in the right hip on this one. Just breathe and relax.
Let's bring your knees back into center. Shake them back and forth. And then go ahead and drop those over to the right. Now this is another one. Both sides may feel differently. If you like, you can put that right foot on the left knee. If not, just go ahead and leave them both on the ground. Feel the wonderful opening in your left hip. We're starting to gear down and relax. The next pose we'll come into is our final pose. So enjoy this for a few more minutes.
Let's bring our knees back into the center. Rock them side to side. Maybe bring them into your chest. Whatever final movements you would like to make before we come into our final pose, Shavasana. If you have a bolster, might feel good to you to put that under your knees. Maybe a blanket or towel under your ankles. Or maybe you don't want to be on your back at all. You might want to be in child's pose. This is your practice. Whatever feels good to you in this final pose. So just scan your body and then relax and breathe.
Let's start to bring awareness back into our body. Start to wiggle your fingers, your toes, make small movements. And bring your knees up into your chest and roll over to the right side and stay there for a breath or two. And when you're ready, come into a comfortable seated position. From here, just observe how your body's feeling. Calm, peaceful. Try to keep this feeling with you the rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining me today. Namaste.